Well, the hymn number is 511. Number 511. Let's stand together and sing the solid rock, please. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust a sweet, but holy feet on Jesus' day. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other way. This sinking sand, all other ground, this sinking sand. When darkness seems to I rest on his unchanging In every high and stormy day My anchor holds within the veil On Christ the solid rock I stand all other way To sinking sand all other ground to sinking Last verse When he shall come with someone say, I'm glad to see you here tonight, and they won't know the difference that you're not here every night. <laughs> Hello, good <enough. laughs> You can be seated now. Yeah, be seated if you will. Number 424. I must tell Jesus. 424. Let's sing it together. I must tell Jesus all of my God. I cannot bear my burden alone, in my distress he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burden alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. I can be compassionate and friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly and end. I must tell Jesus. stands up. Oh, how the world is being all allured me. Oh, how my heart is I must tell Jesus and he will help me. Oh, the world of victory to win. I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus I cannot bear Two hundred and twenty-five is there's power in the blood. Number two twenty-five. This will be an offertory hymn. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood.
Sing verse number three. as we say so grateful tonight for the opportunity we have to serve you in this wonderful church and I pray as we take this offering it will be a time of uh, blessing to those literally around the world as we share the gospel of Christ with them. In Jesus name I pray, amen. And you may be seated. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you so much for that. I want you to open up your Bibles to the New Testament book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. We are going to look here at a sermon on the parable of the talents. Now, I'm dedicating this sermon to Miss Lana Tipton. Where did Lana go? I saw her earlier. Miss Lana, on Wednesday night budget discussion, she asked the question, y'all can't hear me? <clears throat> Rob, uh, can you, I guess, can we, am I too quiet? Can y'all hear me on the back pew? All right, they can hear me. So, uh, can you hear me now? So, um, sometimes when these monitors are turned around, they can uh, blast out too much volume, and it's, it, it creates an echo. 
But uh, Lana asked for a, uh, she wanted a message on stewardship. So this here is in many ways one of the best messages on being responsible to God. It's a parable, and it's actually a parable about our responsibility to the Lord. So I want you to take the time and read this parable. It's about these servants who received these different talents. Now I want to tell you what a talent is before we read this. A talent in Bible times was um, roughly what they call 6,000 denarii. That would be equivalent to $20,000 today. So it's a huge amount of money. It's just, I mean, it's a large lump sum. So you receive a talent and you've got thousands and thousands of dollars. So there's a responsibility when you receive such, such a large amount of money. So that's what the talent is. So Jesus is telling this parable here, and the principle is what are you going to do with what you have? So you have your Bibles, hopefully it's up on the screen here. It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14. And I actually have some points. If you have your bulletin, you can see the points right here on the, on the back. It shares a little bit about what the talent is. So this is, a, remember, a parable is a story that's actually teaching us something different. It's a different story. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey. He called his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent. So those are, those are the talents we've received here. Five, two, and one. And then it says, then he went on his, uh, or it says, depending on each one's ability. So the Lord was aware of what they could do with each of their talents they've received. Then he went on a journey. Immediately the man who had received five talents he went and he put them to work and he earned five more. So he doubled his money. He now had ten talents. And notice the word immediately was there was used. So he knew right away the day he got his five talents, he went to work and said, we want to uh, produce a great return on this investment. And it says in the same way, the man with two earned two more. But the man who had received just one talent, he went off, he dug a hole in the ground, and he hid his master's money. Have you ever known anybody that hides money? in the mattress at home, and they dig a hole and, uh, just in the backyard. So that's what this man did. He hid his money. Uh, only he knows where it's at. It's, it's buried in the ground. Do you all remember uh, Jimbo, Ed? I, th I think he actually, someone told me he buried money on the family farm in Cynthia and Vivian. That's, I remember that one of the funerals I did recently. So that's what he did. So his, there's, somewhere there's his talents buried. After a long time, the master... Of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The man who received the five talents approached and presented five more talents and said, Master, you gave me five talents, so I've earned five more talents. So it's a wise thing. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. The man who had two talents also approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've earned you two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. That statement, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we want the Lord to say to us. God has entrusted you and I with gifts, with money, with abilities, with skills, with knowledge, with wisdom. He gives us stuff. He gives us abilities. And He wants us to take what He has given us Take what he's given our church and we put it to good use and we multiply. But the purpose of the multiplication is for people to get saved for kingdom work. We do ministry. We want people to turn, to, turn from the, their sin and turn to Jesus. So that's what it means. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what you want someone to say about a story of your life. So then we get down here to this last servant. Verse 24. The man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you're a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went off and I hid your talent in the ground. See, have what is yours. He said basically, listen, I know you're a hard man and it's, I know you might even take advantage of people, but look, I just buried your talent here. I'm giving it back. The master replied to him, you evil, lazy servant. He was evil. 
meaning what he did is he didn't use what he had, the gifts he had, that's evil. He's lazy because he didn't do anything productive for his master. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and where I gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers and I would have received my money back with interest when I return. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. So now the man with 10 talents, he has 11 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And what he's sharing about when he talks about have and not have, that's ultimately Christ. Those that have Christ will have even more. Those that think they have wealth and things in this world, what they do have, it will be taken away from them at judgment. They will lose that. So what happened, Jesus is actually telling this in the context of Jewish people. They believed, our Jewish friends back in Bible times, they thought because they were Jewish and they were children of Abraham, they had an automatic ticket to heaven. And Jesus is saying, you think what you have is going to be enough, but it's not. It's going to be taken away because you've rejected my son. They, 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 didn't, they didn't use the gifts they had. They were just, they believed they had an automatic spiritual inheritance based on their birthright. And throw this good for nothing servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So these people who, this one servant who was disobedient, who buried his treasure, he was cast into, weeping and gnashing teeth, an example in the Bible of hell. He was thrown into hell because he was disobedient to God. So the principle of this story, what God wants us to know from this, is our gifts, our finances, our abilities, our skills, God expects a return. We as a church, we expect a return. We want a blessing from the Lord. So the greatest talent we have is actually Jesus. And we have this gift, and we share it with others, we multiply it, and we trust the Lord with any and everything we have. You know, one of the greatest, um, one of the, one of the greatest things that happens in our, our lives, I wouldn't say it's the greatest, but one of the ways we can bless others is many times when people pass away, they leave Broadway Baptist Church or whatever their church is, and their will, and we receive an inheritance from them. For example, Miss Sherry and I just died right now. You will receive 12% of what we own. Now, that's not very much. We don't own very much. But we had a will made up several years ago, and we put in there, we're going to give 12% to the church that we belong to. That is, even while we're in heaven, we're taking whatever we've acquired here on earth and still multiplying it for kingdom work. That is what he's talking about here. What we have, we take it, we recognize the best gift we will ever invest in is the gift of seeing people saved people coming to know Jesus. So you look at your life, you look at whatever gifts and uh, money the Lord has given you, skills, abilities, and say, God, how can I use the talents of my life to multiply it and to honor you so that when I stand before you in judgment, when I'm having to give an account, you look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. We're going to have our invitation. So why don't we all stand up? David Dell is going to lead us, lead us in our song right here. I stand down front business meeting nights we have very short sermons so we're going to respond to the lord you can make a decision to follow jesus this is your time to respond to god i stand on front david plays our hymn of invitation and we respond to the lord this evening sing together i have decided i have decided to follow jesus i have decided
we, you don't want to leave, we are about to have our business meeting. So we have our handouts, they're right, they're right back there in the back. You want to make sure, I believe there were three stacks of our handouts. So we're going to go into our business meeting in about five minutes. You want to go back there in the back and make sure you have all your stacks of your handouts. So make sure everybody grab their handouts. Bob, our moderator, is going to come up here. We're going to start setting up some microphones. So we'll get started in five minutes for a business meeting. So. That's all right. I was just wondering.